Abner J. Washington. <laughs> Come on. But before I get into my story, I just want to tell you. I've changed my name. I am now Abner J. Tortellini. Come on. <laughs> I didn't feel like it was ethnic enough. The last time I talked to you, we talked about Silent Hill. That didn't go too well for me. You know? I ended up dead. Well, at least figuratively. Once upon a time, old Abner was doing a raid. I got a bunch of my guys, and we were going to go attack the, the mob boss known as Bob Barker. Why were you writing Bob Barker? Well, you know, the price was right. <laughs> so anyway, we were raiding Bob Barker's house. We found all these game show memorabilia. <laughs> when we noticed this, this uh, closet full of skeletons, <laughs> And uh, we opened it, and it was a black void <laughs> with an ice chill coming out the other end. I says to Vito, I says, damn, that'll make your balls draw up. <laughs> Shriveled up to the size of grapes when they have been becoming the residents. So I says to myself, I say, Johnny. Get the damn electric blanket, why don't you? Where is the nobody here? Well, he goes out to the car. Make the electric blanket. So I'm, I'm done. I'm finished. I grab out my muzzle loader in my back pocket. I blow his fucking brains out. Man. You know, it's hard to do that to your own brother, but you... <laughs> <laughs> so any good mob boss always sends in the canary into the mine. Mm -hmm. So I call up little Guido. <laughs> Nunzio, that's his name. <laughs> I says, hey bitch, I need a favor. What kind of favor you need, boss? He talks real scrawny. Like he's a rat. Not the kind of rat that tells on people, but the kind of rat that's in my cupboard. <laughs> so I says, I want you to walk into that black hole. And if you come out, I'll give you a raise. So he goes marching in. In about two and a half minutes. And I don't hear nothing from him. And it's like, Jesus Christ. I just think the poor lad is dead. So I'm crying. Balling my fucking eyes out. <laughs> it's just at that moment, Deborah arrives. Deborah's my wife. She's my sweetheart. Oh. Deborah. Has brought me a basket of canoes. <laughs> but she made these a special. They are covered in chocolate. I, I asked her, I said, What are they covered in? She says, Chocolate. <laughs> Underneath the cannolis is a box. You don't need that box. <laughs> Always keep a decoy box in your secret compartment. Because then the bad girl, well, <laughs> the bad guy, the guy that find it will be like, oh, no more. So she brings me out this Italian style dinner. Four stromboli sandwiches. Four meatball subs. Four helpings of spaghetti. <laughs> Big me about. Like, oh, 
far less than you. About the size of my friggin' nuts. I can't help it, they're that big, I got cancer. <laughs> We're sitting there stuffing our face. I got spaghetti sauce on my orbit in. I've even got spaghetti sauce in my ear. So I thought I was hearing things when I heard little Guido nuns, he knows his name. I heard him go, ah! I was like, oh Christ, get the gun. Once again, the bastards forgot the Tommy gun. So we get out our nine millimeters. And we start running. I was like, I'm going in. I sent him in there, I'm getting him out. So I walk into the other side and the chill goes away. Instantaneous heat. Like a summer meadow. I look around. It's very bright and shiny. The sun is beating down upon me. It's like a sauna. And I think to myself, what is going on? Is this some kind of portal or something? I scratch my head. Great Italian thinkers always scratch your head. Think about Socrates or Pluto. So I'm sitting there, little Guido is in a mangled mess in front of me. I mean, he's got blood coming out of his blood. So I picks him up in my arms, he's little, you know. And I says, Guido, little Nunzio, that's your name, Mike. Mike, <laughs> snapped out of it, son. He says, yeah. I said, oh, Jesus Christ, we've lost him. We've lost Nunzio. So I throw him on the ground. 